tinfoil hat. Oh, what the fuck are you guys even talking about? Global controls will have to be imposed. And a world governing body will be created to enforce them. Welcome to Tinfoil Hat. We, we, we go deep, homeboy. Eric, open your mind. Drink from the fountain of knowledge. There's lizard people everywhere. That's some interdimensional shit. Wake up, Aaron. This is only the beginning. Dude, you just blew my mind. Are you ready to get your mind blown? Good morning, Swarm, and welcome to Tim Fall Hat. You know I am. You know I'm here to do. I'm here to rock. Join me as always, Xavier Guerrero, and on the ones and twos, Jay Nice, Juicy Ooh. Johnny, hey. Johnny Woodard. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, yeah, guys, we got a hanger and a banger, bro. Nothing but bangers today. We got Yogi Zorananda on, and enjoy that as I butcher his name the whole time. Uh, he's a nice guy, great guy, uh, goes deep, man. This is a great, I, I, I really enjoyed that episode. Uh, another banger, and I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you enjoy it. Uh, if you want to see me live, go to samtriplee.com, click events, tickets to all of my Place it, all my things, all my thingy things, all my dates, uh, a lot of other stuff going on there. You can get my dates. Our t-shirts are there. Okay, real quick, I want to do my dates real quick. Boise, Idaho, uh, bang, bang, pop. We got Boise, Idaho on the 28th. We're in Ventura, California on the 29th. And then we are also in August 12th. We're at Broadbrook, Broad Brook, Connecticut, Tim Fall Hat Comedy and Swarm. Tank, grab your tickets now. Okay. All my comedy videos are there. All my Rockfin exclusives where I'm putting up, guys, five episodes. Uh, let's see. Yep. Five episodes a week. Five episodes a week. Four time, four weeks in a month. That's 20 episodes. Plus all the other 400 uh, content creators for only $15. You'll never get a better bang for your buck than Rockfin. I'm doing Tim Fall Hats, three episodes on that, uh, Conspiracy Social Club, and we're doing uh, zero. Go down. I'm going to get into the affiliates, but we have all these wonderful affiliates, affiliates for you. They are here to help you in things I think you need. Gold and silver, aqua cure, hydrogen brown gas uh crystals and candles from harley ray we have joel staley and his workout things helping everybody drop weight promo code and then uh legal shield uh social medias you can join all that they connect with the other swarm people go down with all the swarm and then all of our free audio is available at sam triple click all those plus the radio station anything else no uh we rocking today. Let's go. All right. And Johnny. New Broken Sam. Check it out. Johnny A. Woodard on Instagram. I'm lonely. Come follow me. Yeah. Let's go. Oh, yeah. Uh, at XG Marks the Spot on any social media. XG Marks the Spot. Sam Tripoli on all the major uh, social medias. Enjoy the show. We go deep, homeboy. <laughs> Eric, open your mind. All right, very excited to have this next guest on. He's done my a lot of my premium shows a bunch of times. We're happy to have him on the big show. Uh, he's like an outlaw, dude, in the yoga world. I'm very excited to have him on. Please welcome Yogi Zorananda. How are you, brother? Excellent, Sam. Yeah, it's great being here. You look balanced, buddy. You look good. I feel like you're balanced in your life. You got a nice, a nice groove going on based on your energy. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm doing a lot of work on myself, um, mainly just enjoying the simplicity of my life and um, just the mundane parts of working and enjoying my family and friends and not trying to complicate things. That's the biggest thing. Uh, I, I couldn't agree with you more. I'm in the same thing. I, a big part of my life today is surrendering. Uh, I'm really into surrendering. I'm into surrendering about uh, a lot of the craziness in, in my life, the, some of the people in my life that I all love. Uh, they are who they are. I got to let go where I am in my life. I got to let that go. And I just got to go with the flow. And like surrender is a really big thing. Like there's some people in my personal life that I am, uh, 
that I love very much, and I just got to accept them for who they are. And so I, I very it very much resonates with me what you just said, so thank you for that. Uh, before we get into everything we want to talk about, can you tell us a little, for those listeners who may not have heard you on my other shows, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and where uh, where they can find you? Yeah, so um, essentially, I'm a yoga teacher, I'm a yogi, a uh, musician, and an author. Um, where I upload things primarily is through Instagram or Facebook. Um, and I do have a website as well, just uh, zorananda.com, again, where you can find um, my music and my meditations. And yeah, my focus in life as being a yogi is integrating the teachings of yoga into my daily life. So not trying to use yoga in a way to take me away or to change my life dramatically um, in any particular way where exactly what I have going on in my life with my just nine to five job with my friends and family. How as a yogi am I going to integrate all the teachings so that I feel good about myself. Um, I'm treating my friends and family well, and I'm treating society generally and well. So the people I meet and uh, befriend in my life. So like you, Sam, or Mark, or uh, really anyone else that comes upon my path. I love it. I love it a lot. I know you you were uh, mentioning to us in an email that you got a new uh, uh single coming out or a new song we will play it at the end uh, if we can i think it would be great to end the show with it uh but thank you man i bet you know uh been on a real spiritual journey lately been kind of doing some deep dives and one thing i think about humanity and how and just human beings in general is like we're very special and we're very complex and there's a lot to us that maybe modern culture is pushing us in the opposite direction from understanding. And, you know, I, I do do yoga. I try to do yoga every day. Uh, I do it over a YouTube. I don't know if that's like shunned in the yogi uh, societies and circles, but I am trying to do it. I see little um, uh, increases, little growths uh, from this very um, stiff body I have, but I do very much enjoy it. And, so I'm very I'm I'm excited to talk to you about you know I am I'm getting into martial arts but I really do enjoy yoga and what yoga is do you ever do yoga done it like once or twice but I've never sat there and actually like a week's worth which I think is when you start getting the flow of it I don't think one or two days you kind of just do it kind of no like you got to do it for a little while to see the little and you and it's very crazy because you learn a lot about your body when you do yoga things you didn't even understand like. Today, I, I, you know, in Krafaga, one of the women that does it with me, she's a yoga instructor, and we were doing back kicks, and I like my back kick isn't as strong on my left side as my right side. She goes, "Are you left-handed?" I mean, right hand. I go, "Yeah." She goes, "That's why you're more limber on your right side than on your left side." And I didn't know that, but you learn that through yoga and stuff like that. It's very interesting. So, uh, where do you want to start, Zornanda? Where do you want to start? Um, that's a good question. So let's you, see. Here. Let's get into the body. I, I sent you um a, a list of topic notes. So yeah, yeah. Um, let's get into the body and something I find very interesting is the uh, thought of uh DMT in the body and and why yeah. we're always searching for DMT inside. You know, everyone's hey, you've done DMT and all that stuff, and. I, I'm going to be honest with you, I, I am very sober, but there are parts of me that still are interested in the psychedelics. Not going to close the door on that. <laughs> I have no intentions of it doing it anytime soon. You've done it before, though, right? Way back in the day. Yeah, yeah. DMT, I tried to get into it. This guy came over. He's like, smoke it. And, and then my dog just kept barking, so like all the elves were afraid to come out and hang out. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> Pollyanna wouldn't shut the fuck up. <laughs> Yeah, so the world of DMT is complicated, um, mainly because it's new, right? Like when you go back to Rick Strassman in his book, uh, DMT, The Spirit Molecule, that was written in the 90s. And so there's really only like 20 to 30 years of actual bona fide research into what not only endogenous DMT is, but also exogenous DMT. 
And they are two very different worlds. Um, mm -hmm. Even though it's the same substance, what we have in us is operating way differently than if you were to uh, smoke it or take it intravenously. And so my exploration of understanding DMT is within both worlds of first being introduced to it by smoking it and having um, a very intense, powerful experience um, where I interface directly with what would be like a Hindu um, deity Krishna. And there's a whole synchronicity uh, involved in that and why I saw Krishna um, in that trip. But then within the world of endogenous DMT, um, I like to consider it as a microdose in our body. Like we're getting this very small amount every day, all day. And so what I've come to understand is that the fabric of our reality and how we perceive it must be tied to this microdose of DMT because when you do a large dose of it um, ex uh, exogenously, it's very evident that everything around it, around you changes dramatically and you are taken out of the world that you are in and you are plugged into this whole other world. And I like to describe it like you're in a th uh, three-dimensional kaleidoscope where everything around you is moving in this like geometric way with all these colors and Fibonacci sequences and then these beings that are within that world. Um, but obviously, that's not happening here. But with the DMT that is coursing through us at all times, to me, it raises a question of, is the DMT showing us this like solid realm at a pace that is kind of governed by the rules of nature and the world that we're in? Um, and essentially what I found is that yoga is a science of understanding how to amplify your endogenous DMT. And so that your experience of enlightenment is based on how you can get in touch with the operation of the glands and the organs that are involved with the endogenous DMT and how you can isolate it so that your experience of your own DMT can be much more potent than it is just in our day-to-day -day waking life. Okay, so I, I, I'm, I might have missed it, but what is DMT, by the way? What is it? Does they it's dimethyltryptamine. So it's um it's essentially a compound that is breaking broken down and utilized by the body to form other chemicals and other um uh hormones in our body, essentially. It's so interesting, right? I mean, just like what is reality, what is not reality, and how can we uh, 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 manipulate our reality? That to me is a big thing in my spiritual journey right now. Is like, can I control energy? Can I manipulate reality? What is reality? Is there a reality? Do you have a reality based on like... I mean, you talk about the time you did LSD, you did acid, your reality changed. Yeah, I and, would I would agree on that. Yeah, in that moment in time, like you held your soul, you do a little yeah. bit of stand up on it, and the way I picture it, you weren't at the airport the way I was at the airport. No, yeah, <laughs> it's what I mean by that, and that's your reality changing. Like it's a whole. But even when I did mushrooms, uh, many years ago, with my friend at a uh, K Rock Acoustic Christmas, <laughs> uh, this is just when the show had started. And I basically tripped balls and I heard a voice that said, you know, don't ever worry about your career. You're exactly where you need to be. And that was such a, an am, a, amazing moment. And I just remember hearing that going, oh, I just, I'm good. And I've always been like that. I still get here and there like, why haven't I done that? You know, when I'm working with my buddy Sebastian Mascalco and he's like headline Mass and Square Garden and then I headlined a gay bar in Jacksonville. You know, I'm like, what is going on with our, why, why have our careers gone this way and that way? But I'm very blessed, you know, and all that stuff. But it's like super interesting about, you know, 
can you release chemicals within yourself that give you just your fork feeling and manipulate your energy? Like how yeah, essentially, um, in our just day to day normal operation where you're not, um, doing any spiritual practice. It's just, you're waking up when the alarm clock goes off, you're going through your normal routine. Um, that pattern every single day is creating these grooves and is creating, um, this outline and a map for how you're going to experience your life on a day-to-day basis. Right. So, um, and, and everyone has experienced this, right? Everyone who goes to work or goes to school, they wake up, they brush their teeth, they have breakfast, they go on a train, bus, car, they go to wherever they're going, they do their eight hours, they come home. And so that little package of experience is repeated day in and day out, every single day. And that is forming habits and forming an outlook and a perspective of what life looks like. And if that's all you do for 25, 30, 35, 40 years, your outlook is going to be very grounded in that's what life is. Yes. And what yoga is doing and what psychedelics are doing is that it's taking you out of that package. It's taking you out of those programs. And it's showing that there's a way to expand on what your daily experience is going to be. So the... Yoga practice is essentially you are removing yourself from your day-to-day habits and patterns, and you're coming to a place where none of that exists anymore. And all that exists in that moment is you are doing the breath work, you are doing the movements, you are doing the mantras, you are um, doing the meditation, and you put yourself into a whole new experience. And over time, just like how that day-to-day, everyday grind of going to work, it's going to build up to, oh, I got an apartment, now I got a car, now I got a house, now I got a wife, now I got kids, now I got this. And you're amplifying in that world. In the yoga world, you start small. So you start doing the breath work, you start doing the movement, and you go, oh, my hips don't hurt as much anymore. Oh, my body is opening up. Oh, I can breathe better. Now when I'm meditating, I'm meditating for 20 minutes straight for half an hour. And all of a sudden this world starts to shape around you of what the experience of yoga is. And you dive deeper and deeper. And suddenly you start hearing things. You start hearing guidance. You start opening your inner mind and your third eye into a whole new realm. You start being shown things you start having masters come to you and they start speaking to you and you're guided in this whole other plane and so your life as that mundane person doesn't go away what happens is that there's a bridge that starts to be created between the two and you start to bring the guidance and you start to bring the presence of what you're experiencing in that yoga um session or in uh in those moments And you start to see that you can influence your day-to-day mundane happenings with the presence of what you are experiencing in your um in your yoga session and likewise with psychedelics you take the psychedelic all of a sudden boom you are catapulted into this whole new world whereas yoga it's a slow build right it's every day you do it for a week straight and you go, Oh, I feel good. And then you do a 30 day challenge. And by the end of the 30 days, you're like, Oh my God, my body feels so much different. My mind is clear. Then you do it every day for 12 years and you're a whole another person where psychedelics, you do the tab of acid, you do the five grams of mushrooms or whatever you do the DMT. Boom. You're catapulted to that place that took 12 years in a yoga practice. And suddenly you come out and you're like, I'm a whole other fucking person. And it's from that moment that you have to decide how you can integrate because you've fast tracked with the psychedelics, right? You didn't do those 12 years of work. You didn't take the time to integrate and to have every day of working on integrating the yoga into your life. You had that 12 hour experience on the psychedelic and you have to take those 12 hours and unpack them and integrate yeah. them into your life. Yeah. And that's why with psychedelics, because it's a little bit tricky where there are some people who can take to psychedelics and never learn anything. 
and they're like, oh yeah, I'm going to do acid tonight. And you're like, bro, you've been doing acid every fucking weekend and nothing's changed. Right. And so the spiritual practice and the psychedelic use actually work in tandem where you can utilize your spiritual teachings in your psychedelic experience. And so that when you do take the psychedelic, you start to look around and you go, okay, I'm going to do my breath work here and see what happens. And then you'll suddenly feel 10 times, a hundred times more amplification. And you'll start to see how that psychedelic experience becomes special. And it's not something that you just do every weekend. You're like, no, no I'm, I'm going to do that. this like once a year or something. Right? Yeah, I'm with you on that. It's like if if you go to Disneyland every weekend, it's not exciting after a while, right? It's like, okay, woo, there's, <laughs> yeah. a, there's, there's, the, there's Mickey. There's many of them. Eventually, <laughs> it's just I've seen this a thousand yeah. times. It's like there's nothing special. Of it. That is my opinion right now on what our culture's done with sex. They've changed how special it is. And they've made it into a sport more than it is into like this exchanging of energy that it's really, and I, and I do believe if you, if you, if you tap that well too much, right, you're going to eventually feel an energy that maybe you're, you're, you don't want to experience. I think it, it's manipulation of energy. Don't I mean, you think that's also part of the breakdown between, it seems like, men and women don't value each other as much. And I think it's related to that because there's, it's lost some mystery, you know? The, no, the I think 100%. Per All right, guys, real quick. I want to tell you about our friend James McMahon at copy my crypto. Crypto is going to be super interesting. And James McMahon is the right guy to tell you about. Let me tell you about a little bit about copy my crypto. Listen, everybody, we've seen so many people making ridiculous money in crypto, but did you know it's easy for you to do the same? The Copy My Crypto membership sh site shows you the coins that YouTuber James McMahon personally holds and allows you to copy him, okay? It's like having a big brother who knows what he's doing. You don't need to know anything about crypto or how to invest. You simply do what he does. So let me tell you about James. He runs Crypto with James YouTube channel, which despite heavy censorship, has over 26,000 subscribers. Since 2020, he's told his viewers to buy 26 crypto coins. Had you put in 100 bucks into each one, it went on to be worth $120,000. Of the 26 coins, his top pick of the year, a coin called Phantom, went up 692 times from what when he said. The, that one call... Retired a number of people, including guys in their 20s and 30s. Remember, this is all public knowledge. You can go to YouTube and verify for yourself. So if you, you'd like to join the 2,800 members who copy James, then stop what you're doing right now and head over to copymycrypto.com slash TFH. That's copymycrypto.com slash TFH. TFH. That's TFH. You'll not only find proof of everything I've said, but my listeners gain full access for just one dollar. Once again, that's copymycrypto.com slash TFH. The recession is here, guys. You can suffer like everyone else or choose to thrive. James is a real deal. Go visit his site now. Now, a couple things I want to kind of backtrack on with what you've discussed. One thing is uh, I want to get it. I, I'm going to talk about this first, but is meditation. Now I've always found that like, Hey, I have such a busy head. Uh, I really numbed it out with illegal drugs that, you know, a lot of people do that. I know, again, we talked about this on broken simulation, a friend of mine, who's a comic. He, you like, he's, I think he's really struggled to get off drugs because his head is so busy. Can't turn his head off. So, you know, meditation's really great. But my question is, like, these meditation apps, like, they always have you playing music in the background. Do you think that's a good idea? So there's generally a misunderstanding of what meditation is. Um, and what we have at our disposal through either of these apps or through YouTube, whatever, is not even meditation. Um, the process that we're looking at starts with sense withdrawal. So 
in the yoga world, uh, there's something called the Shtanga Yoga, not the Shtanga Yoga from Patabi Joyce, but from um, from Patanjali. It's the eight limb path. And so it starts with Yama and Niyama, Asana, Pranayama. So that's like your rules of your do's and don'ts morally, Yama and Niyama. Asana and Pranayama are your movement and breath work. Then the last four are Pratyahara, Dharana, Dhyana, Samadhi. And so Dhyana is the step before enlightenment. So it's the step before uh, Samadhi. And that's your meditation point. So what majority of people on this planet are doing, what they call meditation, is the very beginning part of Pratyahara, which is sense withdrawal. So when you sit, and you close your eyes and you focus on quieting the mind that's not meditation yet that's just trying to get into sense withdrawal and so the point where you can actually quiet the mind the next step is completely detaching yourself from your body and there's a physiological part of it where you are actually manipulating your nervous system and so it's a process of drawing the energy from your um, peripheral nervous system so from your limbs into your spine your central nervous system from your sacrum up your spine into the center of your brain so if you don't know how to do that if you don't understand the steps involved if you're not practicing that you will never get to the actual point of meditation, which is past dharana, which is concentration. So really, meditation is actually the precursor to enlightenment. And so sitting for 20 minutes and quieting the mind is not really at all meditation. And the tricky thing with this is that meditation has been systematically... Um, commercialized and so it's a trigger word now and that anyone who has um or who does coaching or who does um courses is going to use meditation as a trigger word to get people to buy their shit and so <laughs> when it comes to apps and when it comes to youtube that's all that's happening these people are just putting it out there so that you can click on their video so you can download their app so that they can get revenue from it whether or not you're actually meditating they don't really care right and so in my pursuit of really understanding what this whole process of yoga is and the history of it um to really get into it, it's important to actually practice Ashtanga yoga and to get into all the eight What limbs. type of yoga? Ashtanga. So A-S-H-T-A-N-G-A. -A so Ashtanga just means the eight limbs. So the eight limb path. And, um, and so it's tricky because Prajahara full sense withdrawal is actually really scary because you are shutting down your body and the um the feeling or the the essence of it is actually simulating death and most people are afraid of death and so to actually get into a state where you're beyond the senses of your body your senses have been shut down um, you are now in a concentrated consciousness and awareness, and you are actively concentrating your concentrus, concentrate, uh, consciousness to then expand into the totality of everything around you. You have to overcome that fear of death, of leaving your body. But most people are super attached to their body. And yeah. so as soon as there's a moment where you start losing sensation to your body, that fear kicks in and it's over, right? Is that and the, is that yeah. the same sorry to interrupt? Is that the same thing kind of like uh with uh when you're trying to um like when you're trying to dream and you're trying to uh what's that thing called astral, astral, yeah. astral projection is that the same thing because when you kind of figured out that you're astral projecting you wake back up and you freak yourself out again and now you're awake and you got it takes years to figure out how to do it properly where you kind of don't freak yourself out is it the same thing with meditation 
Yeah, so that's really similar. That's a good example because um, Xavier couldn't say it, but I point to me. <laughs> yeah, so in our life, everything that we do, we're super attached to, right? The job that we have, the friends that we have, the foods that we eat. And so likewise in a dream, because we're um, we're not fully grounded in our body in our dream, the sensation of suddenly taking control and suddenly uh, shifting whatever narrative is playing um, sends like red flags in the body, right? And the goal essentially is to overcome the signaling of those red flags. And so that the shift from one brain state to another doesn't suddenly happen because that's essentially what happening what's happening you're going from a certain part of your brain state which could be like delta or theta or rem and that sudden jolt back to yourself you're suddenly jolting back to either alpha or beta and so it's important to know and to see how this process works and understanding the sleep cycle. So it's usually 90 minutes and we go through, I think like three 90 minute cycles uh, per night. And then we have like a major REM cycle. And, Whoa. and so That's meditation crazy. and actually like really honing in on the sense withdrawal and really honing in on concentration and the amplification of, um, expansion you'll start to see that in your dreams the events that happen in your dreams no longer have a significant effect because if you're just a normal person you have this dream where you dream about your ex-girlfriend or ex-boyfriend and suddenly they have a knife and you're like where'd this knife come from and they're like stabbing people and you're like what the fuck is happening and then suddenly the whole dream change and there's like a comet hitting the earth it's just like all this wild shit's happening and it's showing you that there's this inability to look at your environment and not be reactive and to just look at it and be like, oh, that's happening. Well, I'm just going to go do this instead. And so even in your meditation where you're sitting and you're getting into the sense withdrawal, those brain states are going to try to keep you in beta. Your brain doesn't want you out of it, right? And so there are these like safety measures in place and it's all due to um, like primordial um, defense mechanisms. So to keep you alert, right? But because we're in the modern age and because we don't have the threats that we would have if we were 10,000 years in the past, we can try to trick that part of our brain to shut off so that we can no longer be reactive to our environment and so that the little noises and the little clicks, the little bug, the little this, they're all a part of the in the moment meditation. And what I've come to experience and what I've come to figure out is that you essentially enter into um, uh, like an animated state and or like, how do I want to say it? Like an inanimate state where you're leave your body and you essentially tell the world around you, you tell yourself, you tell that primordial part of your brain, everything is safe. And as soon as that happens, you be, you enter into a suspended state of animation where everything stops. So people around you can look at you and they just see that you're meditating. But what's happened is that your breathing is stopped. Your circulation is stopped. And they don't know. Everything is stopped. And now you are just experiencing the energetic state of what the fabric of reality really Damn. is. And to the people around you, they're all still happening and going around because they're not in the suspended space or state. But you are. So everything is stopped. They have all stopped. To you, nothing is happening anymore. But there's a ceiling to this and there's a capacity to it. So there's a point where you will just expand into that state and suddenly come back. And it's like, nothing's changed. Nothing's happened. Like time has gone by, but you're safe and you're okay. And then 
you can go deeper and deeper into that. Um, and it's, it's convoluted and it's, it's, uh, it's it's interesting, yeah. bro. I mean, it's super interesting. Like, have you guys ever controlled your dreams? No. Have you ever like been like, nope, don't like that. Rewind it, yeah. do it again. Yeah, I've done that. Dreaming, yeah. It's kind of crazy. I've tried to get back into a dream like so bad, and it just doesn't work out. You're like, where are you? Yeah. What kind of dream was that? Oh, she had a fat ass. <laughs> <laughs> where are you? Yeah. Uh, it, it's so you, re so you rewinded it, or uh, yeah, you, I've you done it before. Yeah. I've got, okay, this is a dream. I don't like the way this is going. Rewind it. Let's do it again. And let's run it forward this way with and control them. But it really is. It really is, though. I mean, it's kind of like, uh, what was the Nolan film, you know, Inception, where oh, once yeah. you start to do that, things slowly start to kind of break down, and then you wake up eventually, you know? It's, it's, but what I found, it, there's so much interesting about what you're talking about is this kind of thing that I am... Uh, kind of come to grip with, with is that you know there's always debate like is there mul multiple dimensions and for me it's just like each one of us is our own dimension and especially now with these algorithms but you know to to be able to i, I mean at what what level how long do you have to do your uh, meditation for when you're like stopping circulation like that's mm -hmm. got to be at least brown belt um, the way that I understand it is that um, it happens innately. So it's not that I'm trying to do it. It's not like, okay, I'm stopping my circulation. It's that the shutting down of the, um, of the senses and the peripheral nervous system is that the side effect is going to be that um, the circulation is going to slow down, the breathing is going to slow down, almost to a point where it stopped what's happening is that it's just operating so slowly yes. that it appears like it's not happening at all and that's just because really there's no energy going into the peripheral nervous system for it to operate like it would normally Damn. and so there's different parts of your brain that are now operating that are receiving all of the blood flow that are receiving all of the circulation where the rest of your body doesn't need it anymore and so it's those parts of the brain that suddenly get super concentrated with all this energy that start to sh open things up in a different way and like one example of this is um like those tibetan monks that can go up into the himalayas yeah. and sleep in the snow i was and just when thinking they were, wim hof wim hof yeah, method and so when the like uh, some of these monks were actually taken into a lab to show what happens in their brain state and essentially through the type of breathing that they do through the type of meditation is that all of this like um signaling in the brain just shuts down and all this energy that goes into their metabolism suddenly gets diverted to a different part of their brain and um it's essentially then where this particular signaling is telling the body to take all of the energy that's going into their digestive system and to put it out through their skin. So it's just like when you eat a bunch of food and it's like kind of cold outside and all of a sudden you feel like energy leaving your limbs like you feel your arms and legs getting cold and everything is going into your stomach and your digestive system and so they're doing the opposite they're flipping the signaling so they're taking everything from their digestive system and they're putting it out through their limbs and they really only have to raise their temperature by a couple degrees and it just creates this like layer of um of heat around their body and then they can endure any temperature Man, imagine going down that path. Like, how do you end up at that place where you're like a meditation master? You can manipulate your body's functions just by meditation. The level of like dedication and concentration that some I, that takes. Is that have you found? Is that something like, like what we see with professional athletes? Are there people predisposed to being good at that, or is that something that anyone can do? Would you say? Um, I think kind of both. Um, I think there are, in a sense, anyone can do it, but it's going to be arduous because 
it takes time and effort, right? So say um, you have like a UFC fighter, right? So pick any UFC fighter. Everything that it took to get to that point where that UFC fighter won a title, the amount of energy and the amount of focus and the amount of dedication um, has led to that point. So you take one of these Buddhist monks, they start when they're, you know, eight, 12 years old, probably just like that boxer, that UFC fighter. They started when they're 12, 15 years old. And the development takes time for refinement and for setting in the habits and the patterns for um, execution is essentially, right? So in that one moment where they're going to do it, all of their training comes to a precipice. And really that's how we all operate, right? Like look at you guys in your, in your podcast and your comedy and stuff, like where you guys are at is because of every day, everything that you do to get to this point. Right. So like me and my podcast and I have like 30 episodes and maybe a thousand downloads, right? Like I, it doesn't make sense for me to think that I can operate on your guys's level from where I'm at. It's just not going to work. So in order for me to get to the level that you're at, I'm going to have to put in the work every day, just like you have. So if you want to get to the point where you have more control over your nervous system, you're not only going to have to do the work, you're going to have to find the right knowledge for it. So that's like the biggest key. And it's not really going to come about from scouring the internet. If you look at these Buddhist monks, they're in monasteries where they have scripts and they have um, texts that are thousands of years old that have been refined all along the way that they have access to. So when they open up their texts and and their scripts, they can see, okay, um, in order for um, this technique to work, I have to do these mantras, I have to do this breathing technique, I have to do these movements in that order for this amount of time, for this amount of years. And uh, I think that's the important part. So you, so you yeah. just brought that up. Uh, I I clicked in a Buddhist monk, and we found out these that turn themselves into mummies. And yeah, that's like st- that takes. I mean, uh, he 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 says he starves himself for like years. He literally stops drinking water and just eats nuts over years and years, and then his body just has no liquids, and he mummifies himself. I mean, it's possible. I mean, that is the journey. But what I found interesting about. What you're saying right now is how much is like our our culture now is just so anti journey. There's no journey anymore. It's literally straight to the best, the best stuff. And, and what we're finding is it's disastrous for these people. It's like a great, a, a well known uh, part of this example of this for a very long time has been the lottery. Like how many times do we see people win the lottery and their life just goes to crap because they're not built for, they haven't experienced the journey to making all that money and learning how to handle all that money. So they go right to a, a millionaire or billionaire, whatever, who depending on the size of the lottery and their world just crumbles. They have no clue about how to tell who to let in, who not to let in. All their friends from before now are vultures. And either it ends up they're broke or dead, right? We see that. Now we see that in Hollywood right now. Uh, the American Idol effect of fame. Now suddenly you do one season and you're famous. How? I mean, I, I don't know what year American Idol is on, <laughs> but how many American Idol winners can you name? There's like two. Out of the 20 something, 30 something, I don't know how many years they've been doing it, but because those people have no clue how to handle what comes with that. And, and now later on, the opportunity, the exposure isn't what it used to be, but still, that's a giant bump. And a lot of people can't handle it. They just don't have the, the, the building blocks right. to deal with that, that part of, that comes with fame. So, like, when you start talking about, like, the meditation and, and the journey to becoming a, 
you know, to really get good at meditation, it takes time. And, you know, I'm in jujitsu now. Like, I've had to change my mindset going into jujitsu. Because if I went with the mindset that I had when I first entered, uh, you know, Eddie's first school, I would be like, I can't do any of this stuff. I don't know what he's talking about. I'm, I used to name the moves by the year I thought I would learn them by. But it, but I'd gone in with the wrong attitude. And now it's like, I really am just like, wow, I could do this. I'm okay with doing this. I can do this. And that's a big thing. And like yoga's re- that the same way. Like I used to really struggle with downward dog, like really bad. Like I couldn't hold myself up mostly because I got this fat body and these little like T-Rex <laughs> arms. But once, <laughs> once I just start doing enough, I realize that positioning of my body and my hands, it built this kind of fort to hold myself up. And it's just like increments, increments, increments. And that's the key to everything. Like, you know, it's like it's in podcasting, right? You're like, most podcasts don't make it like, and the number is like 90%. Don't make it to episode 10. And when do you start making money? At 100 no, it, maybe no, unless you got a big start. But it, you don't make money. I, I tell people at least a hundred episodes. If you're not famous and you don't got no plug, I have never made anyone make it's under hundred. Hard, bro. Yeah. It's just a hard gig, but it's possible. You just have to figure out how to do it co- properly, which is going through it. Which is the old saying: go, you got to go through it to get to it. And that's how yeah, you, exactly. That's it. And like that's why yoga is so amazing. That's why I do enjoy doing it. And, you know, just like any kind of physical activity, some people are built better for it than others. It's just the way it is. But that doesn't mean you can't do it. Like, I that that I don't know if, if you've seen this, Zorlanda, but, you know, there's that, that, that woman that is kind of the face of Gatorade right now, and she's a very out-of-shape woman. And, like, I, I really do want to get behind, like, hey, man, that's pretty amazing that with your build that you're a great yoga instructor and you're really good at yoga. Now I think they're pushing an unhealthy lifestyle in a way. But I would appreciate that being like, hey, man, I'm not, probably not built like most yoga people. You, you mean her? Yeah. I mean, the, it's because they've used her as kind of a, a prop. Yeah. So it makes it hard to get behind what she's doing, but it is amazing what she is doing. Also, if you go on her Instagram too, there's no way anybody else with that Instagram would be asked to be a representative of a major brand. I mean, it's super sexual. Remember, it was we we crawled it on Broken Sim, and it's like super sexual. Her like, I mean, it's just I don't even want to yeah, describe. But it like, look at this thing where she's on her head. Look at the t- kind of torque she's yeah, got to get to get. It's impressive, and you'd be like, wow. In any other reality of any other time in human history. You'd be like, wow, that's very impressive. Good for you. Yeah, but then a really big person tries to do that, and they're going to hurt themselves. Well, that's the point. Yeah. She didn't start at that, Xavier. That's I guarantee you that's 10 years of trying to do yoga. Yeah, but she's always been fat, though. She, She's trying to slowly, though. At the end of the day, she can. Well, that's the point of the conversation yeah. I mean, I right don't know. But, but I know. I, I get that. <laughs> no, I get what you're trying to say, but the, you're right. that Someone's going to see that that's as big as that and be like, I'm going to do exactly what she's doing. Well, I which I would encourage I would encourage them to start yoga if they're overweight. I think it's a great yeah, way to start with, get your body going. Yeah, but not start with doing that. Which is right. What, someone right. watch some person watch Gary and she's like, if she can do it, I can do it. And then you know she's hurt, and they never want to exercise again. And then that's the end of being fit. Well, I mean, it's possible for sure. <laughs> I guarantee for sure. But the whole point of the, what I'm trying to say is, she should be seen in a, in a positive light of somebody who is overcoming maybe some physical limitations to be able to do stuff, but she's being used as a prop to cause infighting. Anyways, the point is, is like, I guarantee you that's not like three days of yoga, being able to do that stretch like that. That takes a lot of time and effort. And I, I mean, I, I guarantee you she's made a ton of money doing it. So she probably doesn't regret it, but there is a place where we should really respect what she's doing. Because it isn't easy what she's doing. Like, to me, what she's doing is the equivalent of what Muggsy Bogues did in the NBA. Five you're like three. You're like five three and you're going up against giants. God bless you. You're like three bills and you're doing headstands. God bless you. You know, I mean, obviously we don't want you to be in that kind of shape, but she's figured it out for herself. But yeah, I'm with you, man. This is this is a journey to go 
and, and it's like you got to go through it, man. And like again, I'm going back to my jujitsu. I'm not the most limber guy, but I I have to go. You, you know, you got to go through these kind of like rough patches. And it, and it is that you know it's it's always dark before the light. I mean, it's you just, guys are doing the seventy five. Yeah, and that sounds like you got to go through it. Oh yeah, we are, bro. It's not going well, and it gets back, <laughs> and it gets back to just this whole like I I can't stand when I see three week workout and you're like you go from this to that, and it's like anybody who falls for that is just looking yeah. for the easy way out. But it's not like that. It's 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 like, I mean, we have old wiring in us, and that you know, there's ways that we've been working out for a very long time. I want to get into but kind of our ancient past. Can you and advanced human societies? We just did a thing about hidden history. It's one of my favorite fucking subjects. But what's your thoughts on that, Sorananda? So my. My thought on it aligns uh, largely with Graham Hancock um, and this idea that there was a catastrophic event like 12,000 plus years ago that wiped out an advanced human civilization and that um, that this process is cyclic and that even that advanced civilization wasn't the first advanced civilization and that humanity goes through these cycles of having advanced civilizations having some catastrophe happening and then rebuilding and so um my theory is um, tied to a couple different sources of uh, not only Graham Hancock, but also uh, Swami Sri uh, He has a book called The Holy Science. I have it uh, right here. I love that. I love all those guys, all those old, those yoga guys from way back in the day. Yeah. So in his book, he details and diagrams the yuga cycle. And he uh, basically debunks that the uh, counting system that was used to um, point out the length of the Kali Yuga is totally wrong. Oh, snaps. And that, um, and that the yuga cycle is based on the precession of the earth and not only the precession but also the movement of our sun in the galaxy tied to a binary star and that star is a uh, serious um b i think um and are you talking the dark star yeah oh my god bro that's weird that's crazy <laughs> We've been wanting to get into this. We talked about that last episode, but he's like, I got to go. I can't talk about it. But this to me is super <laughs> interesting, man. Yeah, there's actually something I want to read. Um, Please. Just quickly from his book. Um, so uh, there's a couple of uh, short paragraphs here. But essentially, he starts with um, a short discussion with mathematical calculation of the yugas or ages will explain the fact that the present age for the world in is Dwapara Yuga. So we're not in the Kali Yuga. The Dwapara Yuga is the age of electricity. And that 194 years of the Yuga have now, uh, bracket 1894, passed away. So um, in 1894, when he wrote this book, um, the Kali Yuga... He wrote Kali that in 1894? Yuga, yes. Damn! Um, so... The Kali Yuga ended, and then there's a blending period of 200 years. And so there was 194 years that led up to this point where um, the Dwapara then actually starts in, what would that be, uh, um, 1898, uh, around there, uh, bringing a rapid development in man's knowledge. Uh, we learn from Oriental astronomy that moons revolve around their planets and planets turning on their axes revolve with their moons around the sun and the sun with its planets and their moons takes some star for its dual and revol revolves around it in about 24,000 years of our Earth, a celestial phenomenon which causes the backward movement of the equinoctial points around the zodiac. The sun also has another motion by which it revolves around a great center called Vishnu Abhi, 
which is the seat of the creative power Brahma, the universal magnetism. Brahma regulates Dharma, the mental virtue of the internal world. When the sun is in its revolution round its dual, so that's it right there. When the sun is re- in its revolution around its dual, that's the binary star. Comes to the place nearest to this grand center, the seat of Brahma. Dharma, the mental virtue, becomes so much developed that man can easily comprehend all, even the mysteries of spirit. God dang. That book is intense. It's a great book. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot, bro. That's some heavy data right there. So... so- uh, essentially what he's saying so i'll bring up this picture again and um johnny if you even if you just look up um uh yuga cycle like yeah, shri yukteswar um so shri yukteswar's name is right there there you go look at that buddy go quick go quick i'll give him he's this is his second language give him a moment <laughs> yeah um so when you look at that wheel, um, the yugas are... Oh, there we go. That one right down there. Yep. There we go. Yeah. So the thing that pisses me off about the whole New Age community and the whole age of Aquarius, we're not even close to the age of Aquarius, okay? When we talk about the yugas, we have to use Vedic astrology, so we Man, have to dude. use this diagram. We can't use Western astrology because we're using an Eastern religious system, right? So you can't overlap Western with Eastern and say, oh, we're in the age of Aquarius because Western is flipped. It's actually flipped the other way. So the age of Aquarius is at where it says the nearest point in the Satya Yuga. So that's in the age of enlightenment. Where we are is where that dotted line is. So that dotted line down at the Dwapara is 1894 or 1896 when Sri or Sri Yukteswar was alive, right? So if you were to go like, what would that be? Like 200 plus years, we're actually in the age of Leo within the Dwapara. And so that makes sense because we are in the age of electricity. Everything that we do is based on electricity. The cars that we drive, the house that we live in, the streets, our cell phone, everything, all of our technology. And so we are on the upswing. And so all of this doom and gloom about the world's going to end and the elites are taking control of everything and we're doomed is such bullshit because we are at the end of the Kali Yuga into Dwapara ascending to the Satya Yuga. And so the point of meditation is to unplug yourself from this point in the Dwapara and to accelerate and travel to the Satya Yuga and enter into your Satya Yuga body because we have bodies all along this cycle. We have incarnations all along it because these are thousands of years. And so the thing about humanity is that through the yoga practices, through meditation, what animals can't do, we can unplug from ourselves, travel. And this is also gets into like uh, Drenvalo Melchizedek and the Merkaba and creating your Merkaba so that you can travel to another body to another point in time. And there's scales at which this happens to people naturally and then there's this happens to people through effort and i think someone like nikola tesla was someone who could do this naturally that he can just go to bed go into meditation and he can travel to these future versions of himself where he's gaining all this knowledge and he's coming back and he has all this crazy technology that he can share and so this is also something that Yogananda, who is the disciple of Sri Yukteswar, specifically talks about, and he says directly in his book, The Autobiography of a Yogi, that through the Kriya Yoga practice, you can advance your consciousness thousands to hundreds of thousands to millions of years. So you can actually cycle. So this of what we're seeing as just a circle is actually a spiral. What? And that we spiral up it and it's 24,000 years. So we're spiraling up every 24,000 years to new cycles of earth experience. 
And so what we are on right now is just one part of the cycle in this iteration of the earth. And that's why there's all this talk about it being a simulation because there are all these other different versions and you can spiral upwards and you can spiral downwards. Yeah. And that's the difference between good and evil because spiraling downwards, you're going back down through the Kali Yuga and you're going back, you're recessing back and going darker and darker. And uh, if you're, if you're familiar with like um, the law of one, the raw, the raw material by um, Carla Rickert and Don Ellis, <laughs> Raw talks about the same thing, that there's this polarity in dimensions and densities that on the earth plane, the duality is very present. It's here with us, night and day, good and evil, black and white, where then when you go into the upper densities, you start to then um, go into a, like a polarity of all good or all evil. And so... This is a map in not only our timeline, but also how our consciousness can travel um, expeditedly to these other Earths and these other realms. That's um, that's incredible. That's that's incredible. So it is. We are we are leaving. We are still in Leo. And how long will we be in Leo? Roughly, um, your base, guesstimation. So. The Dwapara age, from what um, Sri Yukteswar says, I think is 2,400 years and has a blending period. Uh, he says it right here. Um, the period of 2,400 years during which the sun passes through the 220th portion of its orbit is called Dwapara Yuga. Dharma, the mental virtue, is then the second stage of development and is but half complete. The human intellect can then comprehend the fine matters of electricities and their attributes which are the creating principles of the external world. So 2,400 years plus two periods of blending, um, which is 200 each, 400, 2,800 years. 2,800 so, years. Yeah. So we're at the beginning. So what we think is so advanced, oh my God, Tesla cars, like oh, we're, um, we're, EV we're cars. Early? This is just the fucking beginning, man. We oh. haven't even seen like even I'm close to what humanity shit. is. <laughs> yeah, but this is where we plant seeds. It's like the saying where I plant a seed, I plant a tree that I won't see fully grow that my grandchildren will get the fruit of, right? Or that my grandchildren will be able to play on. So it's the same thing as humanity in what we're doing in this age, we're planting the seeds to what humanity will have and be in the further reaches of the Dwapara age. And so someone like Elon Musk, I think innately is another one of these people that innately is just tapped into the further reaches of this is pulling energy in and he's getting the downloads to create and plant the seeds of what is going to be happening later on. Interesting. Interesting. It's yeah, man. So you can like, if you meditate and you vibrate upwards you can tap into some stuff from the future? Essentially, yes. Come on! Um, I'm all and about that's, that, And that's dude. why, like... Johnny whole, doesn't like, think I'm psychic. I'm psychic. <laughs> I can draw from the future. <laughs> all right, guys, real quick, I want to tell you about our affiliate program on samtriply.com. I'm working with some really wonderful people trying to get you the best of the best that uh, I think is important for you in, in, in the upcoming zombie apocalypse, okay? So we have, uh, if you're looking for gold and silver, wh who knows what's going to happen with the fractional reserve banking system. It could collapse at any moment, maybe in August. We don't know. If you go to buy gold and silver, go to go to samtriply.com, samtriply.gold. You, you can join the Wise Wolf uh, Wolf program and they will ship out to you monthly installments of precious metals i do it every month i'm getting sent precious metals a lot of silver some gold i love doing it. it's a great way to stock up on precious metals aqua cures hydrogen gas i've had people hit me up tell me they love doing it and how it's really working for them i have it at home i have to hook it up it's a it's a lot of stuff i'm working on but i'm gonna put it together so i can start breathing that sweet 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 hydrogen man give me that sweet hydrogen but mm -hmm. click on that 
You can use the promo code right there. It says it right there on the banner. Use that. Uh, Joel Staley is a good friend of mine, and he helped me lose a lot of weight. I am now doing 75 hard, leading into going back in the fasting. I'm training my body, doing fasting. Joel Staley has a proven system that will help you lose weight. Again, just click the banner, use the promo code, and Joel Staley will work with you. He's 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 going to help you, if you do it right, lose 25 to 50 pounds in 90 days. That's like half a person right there. Uh, Harley Ray! We love, yay. Yeah. <laughs> we love the Harley Ray people. We love them. Look at that size of that. Chris, was that crystal right there? Holy oh, dude, crap. I got a ton of these for, uh, she sent them to us for Broken Salmon. They're great, man. They're- Look at those. Damn, bro. They're huge, dude. They're huge. I know XG thinks there's something else. I was about to say, careful with that, ladies. Yeah, okay. (laughs) Going back. Uh, Again, if you just use... uh, Those are big. What? what, I mean, that's like her whole forearm. Yeah, yeah. Easy, guys. (laughs) Easy, easy. They listen to the show. Their parents listen, too. Please stop. But if you use Swarm 15, you get 15% off anything you're buying. And finally, Legal Shield. If you're looking for some legal help, they do a monthly thing. And with that, you can hit, they got different uh, law firms they work with that can help you uh, sign up and get some legal help on certain, um, on certain things. So check that out. Again, Legal Shield. They're there to help, and that's our affiliate. So, uh, all right, uh, check it out. Help us help you. Help us help you. Yeah, and I think um, the whole thing of, like, be here now, uh, especially Sadhguru. Sadhguru said this shit that I just don't agree with where he's like, don't think about the past. Don't think about the future at all. Just be here now. Okay. But when you think about that, your past informs you of the mistakes that you've made. And the future holds the paths to which you could be the best version of yourself, right? So if you're entrusting yourself right now with a person who's telling you, don't ever look at your past and don't ever look at your future, you're basically giving that power to that person. And they now have what it takes to mold you into what they want you to be, which is basically a battery for their operation, right? So you look at all these like gurus who are just like big and famous and they have all this shit and they have like thousands of people that follow them. They're just utilizing all of that human energy and potential for their own creation of their future. And it's like, why? That totally takes self-mastery out of the hands of the individual, and you are now entrusting your self-mastery into someone else. I I I don't want any part of that. I love that. So we got this idiot who comes on the show. It's a really smart, (laughs) dumb guy. right? He's really intelligent, but he's not very smart. His name's Dr. (laughs) Shiva. And he's trying to... uh, uh, The the fans of the show are called The Swarm, and... And he's trying to demonize the term by calling rebranding the swamp to swarm. And he's so, he has no clue of anything. And one thing he doesn't understand, and and this resonates with what you just said, is that there is no swarm. There's only Ronin. There's nobody should ever worship or, or follow in any, and not that you do, but you should never worship or follow anybody on this show in any kind of way. You should be your own master. There's no lords. There's no masters. There's only Ronins. And you all run in your own thing. The only thing you worry about is your family, you, and, and, we're, and, some, uh, and where you are in your journey. That to me, that's what you just said resonate with me. Because I remember when I saw this dumbass tweeting that. And, you know, I, j- I just want to keep just dropping bombs. And then I'm like, let him go. Because it's the dumbest thing ever. He's obviously butt hurt that we he got checked on the show. And that's it. You know? And it's just like, this guy doesn't know how to play the game of life. I don't care. Listen, you could have all the money in the world. That doesn't mean you're a good person. Oh, he already went after... Uh, um RFK Junior. He yeah, went after well, him. He, like, that's yeah. where he made his bones on. Yeah, he's but but uh, it's also. I mean, what kind of person are you when you assume 
in everything, you can't be wrong. You know, you can't have a discussion about your opinions. I mean, that 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 to me is insecurity. Yeah, one hundred percent. And again, it's just like, hey, dude, every every time you wanted to come on, you had a green light. It's just we don't want you talking about friends of ours because that's not what the, that's not how I roll. I'm a loyal guy, and but at the end of the day, you're you're making fun of a fucking ghost. Like the the, the swarm is just a name. Everybody is a Ronin. They're all their own masters. They're their own leaders. There's no leaders. There's no kings. There's no masters. There's only the Ronin, and they run by themselves. And it, if they've listened to me at all, they should always. You know, the swarm is a fun thing to call each other, but in reality, you know what it kind of reminds me of, like Anonymous. Well, and in no a weird one, way, like, no, no one you know knows what, what Anonymous is. is. No, it's Fight Club, bro. Yeah. Okay, I see. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Anonymous, bro. You're on your, in in that sense too. You're you're your own person. That's really all I want you to get from this show. Is like, you know, you know, this whole with RFK, everyone's getting hope. Why are you falling for that again? But going back to our discussion here. Is that you have to you you can't follow anybody. You nobody's coming to save you. If you're if you're just I mean you could read some things about how people did it, and you could watch how somebody did it and apply that to your life, but you have to be the one applying it. You can't be taking you can't be taking instructions from somebody. You have to learn on your, I mean, like, granted, we can go to yoga class and all that stuff, but you can't expect anybody to show you the way. You have to lead the way. Am I, am I, am I near that at all? Yeah, essentially, it's whether or not the person that you are inspired by is offering tools that are going to help you build um, your self mastery right if if they're not giving you tools that can um actually lead you away from them um then there's there's something wrong right where um say um for example in where i'm from in edmonton there's this cult leader named john de ritter and he amassed a huge following um, and there's several friends of mine who got caught up into this. And um, my teacher, his name is Yogrishi Vishvaketu. He's a yogi right from the Himalayas, right? Has his own uh, yoga school called the Kunda Yoga. And um, he went to one of John DeRitter's meetings. And John DeRitter does this thing where he'll spend two to three hours staring at everyone literally won't say a word he'll just stay it and then people will come out of it like some miracle happened and uh we asked our teacher <laughs> Vishaji, like so what do you what did you think about john de ritter um and he was like well yeah he seems it seems pleasant but there's no tools how can you fix yourself if you're not given any tools and that was um, a huge impression on me to, that when I was writing my book and I was creating my meditation is that I didn't want to come across like I'm someone that needs followers and that they need to buy my book and they need to entrust in me for the answers is that I wanted to give them tools and I wanted to give a process that you can have and it has nothing to do with following me. It has nothing to do with me becoming a guru. It's all about self mastery. And so that's, what's really important at this point, especially with social media and especially with the obsession of, um, like, uh, the leftism and rightism and picking your cheerleader for each side. It's like, that's all a guys to take away from your self mastery to realize that the potency that you have within you as just being a human being first starts with the people close to you. And it starts with how you can make your life better and the people around you better without causing division, without causing um, like hatred or anything. Right. And so I think these gurus and these like kind of up there masters are inadvertently adding to the division by 
preventing people from actually stepping into their self mastery and asking questions of like who they are as a person where they can derive an answer just out of their own mind. Yeah, I am. I am. I'm always amazed that like the, a, a great example, of what you're talking about is acting class in Los Angeles. So you'll start an acting class and you'll go there and there'll be somebody that's been in that acting class for like six years. <laughs> and you're like, at what point do you figure out if you can act or not? Or at what point are these tools being applied? Or what? Because the acting teacher, if he teaches you the how to act, why are you going to take classes from him anymore? You don't think it's like jujitsu though, where maybe you just keep learning? Some people are doing it because they just enjoy doing it. Is that not possible? I mean that that's definitely possible, but I don't think at some point I I don't think you master jujitsu. Until you're like ten years in, you don't think. Well, I think also like no, because if you mastered it, you'd be on rolls. Do you think the people on the CW have mastered acting? No, that's why, that's my point. Yeah, I mean, like maybe I mean all those people still act, right? Like, I mean, still go to acting class. All the working actors, they still you most of them still go to acting class, right? So, okay. I don't no, I don't. I think very rarely actually. Oh really? But I could be wrong. I, mean, I, I always hear like Gwyneth Paltrow. They would like, always. My, my acting teacher says, you know. This. Yeah. When was the last time she didn't? Act well, they get private, so they're rich now. So they see. But you know how Johnny said they might like it. Oh, I that's think true. I, I think it's different because in stand up, you you might not be good at it, but you're looking for a laugh. Yeah, like improv. And too. acting, you see those improv people yeah. that do it forever. But in acting, I mean, are you really just looking to get rejected every time you go to an audition? It's interesting. I know there's people who really love acting, right? They really love to act. Uh, and I, you know, we had a guy who, um, uh, what was the guy? Uh, we've talked about him on, my pot, on the other podcast. Uh, New Girl, what was his name? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. He used to come back to this acting class. And that was the first Green, time. Greenberg or something. Yeah, like I actually that. I watched him, but I go, wow, Max. that's a real actor right there. That guy knows how to act. And Max Greenfield. Max Greenfield. He's the first time I've ever seen what a real actor. And you said he'd go to uh, just re- acting classes. He would classes. show up because he had taken acting classes and he would just show up when he wasn't working just to hang out. And then he would do a scene. He'd work out a scene or he'd like have a scene he was auditioning for. An a little ego boost, it seems like. Well, he was phenomenal. He yeah. still is a great actor. Yeah, if you were crushing, you know, warm up pitches, I guess it would feel pretty good to yeah, go back yeah, and do yeah, that. Yeah, I get it. I get it. But I guess it's like a black belt going back to yeah. like yellow, white belt jujitsu classes, maybe. But Dave Chappelle the, showing up at open mics. The point <laughs> is, is like, how much tools are you getting to actually leave? When's the leaving point? Well, I think um, some people are just afraid of their self-development and they're afraid of um, losing the crutch that helped them heal, right? So a lot of the people in the yoga community, they come in it because um, they had some traumatic experience. They were in an accident or something happened and they found yoga and this person helped them with their healing. And so um, a codependency is created in that relationship where it can be intoxicating for that teacher to have a whole bunch of people that are dependent on them. And they're seeing that like, holy shit, like these people are paying me hundreds of thousands of dollars each to to be in this role and so it's like that like commercialization of yoga kicks in and capitalism kicks in where they're like well i want more people like this and so they will start to form what their business model is around broken people or around people who want to be fixed and so they're just collecting all these people and they're going to do what they're everything that they can to keep them and so it doesn't make sense in their business model to actually um, promote self mastery because then suddenly they'll just lose everyone and it tanks their business, hmm. right? And what's happens though is that there's like these little seeds of darkness that are planted, and you have people like uh, Bikram uh, Chowdhury or um, uh, who's another one, um, even like Batabi Joyce, like Bikram's the biggest one, right? Where 
he's just feeding on all these people paying him and then he's taking advantage of all these women. And so if you start having students that are stepping away and they're like, you know what, I'm going to go do my own thing, that becomes problematic. And so what I really liked about my teacher is he did the complete opposite. He's like, everybody are my, everyone's my friend and I don't want you following me. I want you to come and do some classes and do a training and go and do your own thing. Go open up your own school. I Go open that. up That's your own studio. Opinion. And it's attracted so many people. And like now, I think when I did my training in 2016, my 300 hour, at that point, he had over 30,000 people initiated in his Akanda Yoga teacher trainings from people doing trainings all over the world. And so that was like, what, eight years ago, almost seven years ago. So it's got to be even like higher now. And, and it's really based on that philosophy of him bringing people into his ashram or bringing people to where he's doing workshops and getting the tools that he has to offer. And he goes, okay, go back to your world, go back to your life and do your thing. And um, that to me seemed so much more beneficial and so much more wholesome than say this other yoga teacher that I had um, who operated out of Copenhagen, Thailand, uh, and he had the Agama Yoga School, he straight up would tell people, leave your family. They don't love you. They don't want you. They don't understand you. They don't want you to have spiritual development. I do. So come, stay here. And he amassed all these people oh. that would come and stay. And the crazy thing is, is like he got caught with like 32 allegations of sexual like misconduct. And suddenly you have all these people who have abandoned everyone in their life who are now just stuck. Lost. And they're like, what the fuck do I do? I don't want to keep learning from this. And then they have to like restart their life. Right. So the, the yoga world um, does inevitably have this like duality between people who are going to take advantage and people who are actually wholesome. And so for me, um, I'm fortunate enough to have had these experiences and not be like taken in by like, say the Agama school. I was just an observer. I went to do the yoga and came in and out. And then, um, with, uh, Vishuji, my teacher, he's been this like beacon of light of showing truly what it means to be a yoga teacher and to promote self mastery within the people that I'm interacting with. It's gotta be hard not to be a, a a creepy yoga cult leader. I mean, like you're dealing with the hottest chicks out yeah. there. Oh, the yeah. hottest chicks, man. And like, in yoga, like, and they're all in yoga pants. And they're it's all like, like 20 you're the leader. <laughs> man, like every class, it's like 20 to 1. I yeah. swear to God. It's oh, like, now let's, in, now, yeah. let, now let's do hot yoga. Yeah. Yeah. It's just is going to get, yeah. I to me, see. all yoga is yeah. hot yoga when you're with hot chicks. <laughs> yeah, you're just sweating no matter what. <laughs> right? It's just unbelievable. So, yeah, man, I think, it, I you know, it's like everybody's on their own journey. It was like crazy to me because I remember um, a long time ago, we kind of had a discussion with you on a couple of the issues that come up with yoga, which you and I both were like, this is kind of ridiculous. You know, there was, a, do you guys know that there was a, there was a city somewhere in the United States. And I want to say it was either Louisiana or Alabama that banned yoga. Cause it was like, it was like satanic or something. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Can That's you believe funny. that? Yeah, I can believe that. Yeah. Al Alabama <laughs> drops its ban on yoga in public schools. Uh, Alabama banned yoga back in 1990 and 1993. No, oh. but it was more recently. Oh, recently. Oh, Cause that sounds like satanic panic if it was in 93, but I mean, dude, I mean, Alabama I'm not, I'm not 93 surprised. must have been wild, right? I mean, like, dude, they, everything must have been Satan, right, back then? Uh, it was just crazy. And then bringing up that, that, that fat chick that does yoga, she got on the scene because she was saying that yoga was a uh, racist. And I was like, what are you talking about? If there's anyone that's open-minded, it's yoga people. To the point of, no no, no offense, but uh, they, there are probably a lot of super liberal progressives in there uh, and that are like, you know, that are just overcompensating to any, if anything, 
You know, I that's not a group where I think there's a couple like, hey man, who wants to hear a good black joke? Like, no, 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 okay, no, let's you know, like nobody's doing that in a yoga class. No. It's a bunch of guys that could be pretty easily convinced to try gay stuff. You know what I mean? They, they'd be like, hey, bro, not cool. I'm just telling you, dude. <laughs> not cool, man. Just to prove their liberal credentials, though. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not homophobic. Sure, I'll touch it. Yeah, I don't yeah. care. <laughs> these, these, yeah, some of these. I think, fu- okay, okay, you agree, I, I think your thing was like um, white supremacy, that like uh, yeah. uh, yoga is uh, white supremacist. Because, like, if you're looking at the yoga community only in North America, only in LA, then like, yeah, it's going to seem like there's a certain kind of people that are dominating who like the attendance, but yoga is now a worldwide phenomena. So if you go to China and you go to India, you go to Africa, you go to um, Europe and you go into the yoga classes there, you're obviously going to see who is dominating like the yoga scenes there and it's going to be dependent on where you're from so yeah, demographics and stuff and here's the thing about about the, the notion of something being racist it's like if you're allowed to do it and they have no if they're allowed to do it and they have no interest in doing it that's not racism like base baseball has that issue they keep trying to make it a race issue about baseball and i'm like it's just not attractive to the youth at that time to play baseball. They just don't want to. Black youth, it's not their thing. They love other sports. That's what they like. Boxing, uh, 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 not football. Even bo- not even boxing as much anymore. They're losing boxing. But yeah, but, but it is dominated, one. at least from an American point of view, of a certain demographic, which is fine. Nobody's ever said like you couldn't go to a yoga class. It just doesn't seem like something culturally that is in their culture right now, which is, I think wrong. It sucks. It just sucks. But there's also like, if you look at America, the percentage of, of any group, it's like there's 40% white, and then there's like, what, 20% Latino, and then you start breaking it down, and it's just like, in your big cities, maybe there's an issue. In the smaller cities, there's just not a lot of everybody, so they're not going to show up and do those things, but I guarantee you, 99% of the yoga classes are going to be like, yeah, come in, do some yoga. Come and join us. The notion that there's a white supremacy is just a grift right there, which is why I go, we should have... If, if this woman had broken onto the scene with that ridiculous yeah. notion of white supremacy, we should be like, be like, that's pretty amazing to be that size and being those moves. Hundred percent. I think it's the same thing with like, uh, you know how we go to Tenth Planet sometimes with Eddie. We'll stop by one of his one of his uh, schools. Yeah. that's like me being like, oh, they're racist because there's one Mexican here. Yeah, well, but, I mean, but they're so nice. You've if never I, been the Van Eyes. Yeah, it's all Mexican. Like it says it's all no, Mexican. That's true, but I guarantee you, if I wanted to be in that juice, they'd be so inviting. Yeah, 100%. they'd be like, yo, come on. Yeah. You don't have to clean at the end. It's okay. And it's not like if you, <laughs> you brought like a end. few of your Mexican friends, <laughs> they would be like, whoa, 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 whoa. No, not that many Mexicans. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, slow like, down on the Mexicans. <laughs> Too many. But it's it's true, dude. It's just it's it, again, it's a grift, and that's what we were talking about with her. It's like she should be being celebrated, but she chose a clout chasing shortcut, which goes into what we originally talked about at the beginning of this this discussion. And like the thing that I like about yoga, as a guy who is like probably the most limber human being you've ever met in your life, but I'm slowly getting it. I can't do all the moves. I have weird legs my legs are just weird she's like then try, I, I watch the videos then try this and then try i'm like that's not happening lady we, not all of us have bird bones okay some of us are just 50 year old armos from turkey okay so um <laughs> so it's it's uh it's definitely a little weird man uh but i do enjoy it and i do enjoy everything you talked about here today it's like you know, I've been on this real, like, again, as we talked at the beginning, a spiritual journey. And, I'm, you know, I got to do a lot more research, you know, even at my age. I'm still doing research. But for me, it's just I think it's a little bit of everything. I think religion and spirituality is more of an MMA than one discipline. But we'll see. I'm on. I'm on a journey. I. I. I hey, man. I agree. I do CrossFit once a week. I'm getting into Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu yeah, right away, dude. and I practice yoga. Um, 
Yeah, like the path of of learning about yourself um to me is about like what excites you, right? And so um like like for me, like I don't go into yoga studios anymore to practice. I have my own practice I I've, I've been doing it for 12 years, so I I know what I can do on my own. But now I'm like, well, I I want to learn new things and I want to go and participate in community. And so like, I've been doing CrossFit for the last three years with my trainer and I just met like a black belt in jujitsu as his own school. And, and so like, what is going to bring you into, um, like more self-development it's going to be these new things that is going to test your boundaries and is going to show you what you don't know. And that's like the biggest thing that, um, I learned when I turned 30 is that like, I don't know everything, like regardless of how many fucking books I've read or all the meditations I've done where I've traveled, my life is going to be a continuum of not knowing. And that's just going to open me up to meeting new people and learning new things and being excited that I'm taking care of myself in unique ways. Yeah, I- I'm with you, man. Oh, you must be great already. A lot of moves in yoga. I mean, in jujitsu, if you're so limber, bro, you must be able to do everything, dude. <laughs> Put your ankle behind your head, choke them out. I'm like, God dang, dude. That's never happening with this body, bro. That's never happened. Well, I love it. Uh, you know, I, I love it, Zornanda. I, I, and I appreciate that you don't get kill me every time I fuck up your name. And I swear I'm trying my hardest not yeah. to. And But you've been on my It's show. funny, though. When you have trouble with somebody's name, you say it more to the person than when you don't have it. You would never, like somebody like Tom or something. Because I keep trying something, to get you, it right. <laughs> oh, is that what you... Oh, okay. I got it. And that then I keep sense. butchering it and it's... Hey, you I, said it right the last two times, so I think I think you got it. Okay, man. Well, I appreciate it. One more hey, time. Hey, maybe that can be your mantra. You know, maybe I can bestow a mantra <laughs> upon you as a guru and just say my name inside your head over and over. I don't know about that. Say your say name. I respect. Say I respect. my name. Hey, so uh, one more time, name, tell them where they can find you. So on social media, uh, you can find me on Instagram, um, just uh, Zorananda Yoga, and uh, check out my website Zorananda.com. That's where you can find my music and uh, my meditations and my book. And I did release a brand new song. I'm where working on a rock that? album, so you can find that on Apple Music and Spotify. And the best way is to go on my website. It's one dollar. So if you want to support me in what I'm doing, you can buy the song for one dollar. I have um uh paperback and uh hardcover and ebook versions of my book as well. You can also find my book on Amazon. Uh just look up future life progression and uh it's a space background with a door on it. And uh yeah. Well, I don't know if you want us to play your song or is there a snippet anywhere we could play it? If not, no biggie. Yeah, uh, so it's up on Spotify right now. So you can uh, you can play it if it works from Spotify. Um, can you find it yeah. on Spotify? I'd have to do that we'll go out it. on a, a song here. And guys, again, go to samtriply.com. Check out uh, all my dates. Check out the t-shirts. Check out the uh, all the uh, rock fin um content i'm putting on there 15 dollars gets you all 400 of the content creators can There's, i can i just ask what song would be a good one to go out with here Is there one on there? uh favors okay. favors is the new Perfect. one yeah right. so after we listen to favors uh can you please please uh stay for the highlights of our uh some of my other podcasts uh join us and we're also gonna break down again for you a little bit of our um are, well, maybe we won't. I don't know. We'll figure out. Maybe we will. Maybe we won't play you a little bit, tell you a little bit about our affiliate programs. But uh, anyways, thank you guys so much. We appreciate you. Please enjoy the song and enjoy the highlights.
Here's a clip from the latest Broken Sim. Oh my God. This is the craziest story, bro. This is the craziest story, Johnny. So I have the follow up to this. Yes, too, please do it. Okay. So what we're looking at here. By this the way, the this first is not thing. the Vegas shooting. No. <laughs> no. This was the first thing that anybody <laughs> saw about this. And all it was was a tweet that said, What is going on at Caesar's Palace? And then you see a broken window, and then out of it comes. What what is that? Uh, it's a dresser. It's like a, a a bedside table. Yeah, it's a bedside dresser. A, like bed, where, a bedside where table the, where the where light, the lamp is. Yeah, where you pull out and there's the Bible. Yeah, exactly. It's a bedside table, and then it just goes flying out the window down about 20, 30 stories. Uh, and so people are like, "What the hell's going on?" Well, then you hear a little bit later that they had a hostage situation. Yeah, in that and room. this is the craziest story. And then but, you, and then finally, it doesn't. Okay, t the story is. What the original, it doesn't make any sense. And this is like typical BS. This is, sounds to me, Johnny. Okay, tell him the story. Well, tell you, tell the the story. you tell the uh, the first part of it. The you heard. first part of the story is that this one guy kidnapped this chick, like grabbed her in the hall, pulled her in, and they had to go save her. But then the story starts to come out that he's a tweaker. She thought he was an MTV reality TV star. And she literally says the only reason I had sex with him is because I thought he was an MTV star. Allegedly as well, because I haven't seen that reported. But yeah, I saw it on Twitter. Uh, Allegedly, she was sleeping with this guy because she thought he was a reality TV which star. Which is like, is it is it a kidnap or is it like a groupie thing? Which one is it? Are we kidnapping well, you tell or are me you that. having okay, sex? Tell me that. Is that sexual assault? If someone only slept with you because they thought you were famous. No. Okay. I agree. It is not. I agree. Because that you're stupid for having sex with somebody because Well, famous. this is fun with stupid, and yeah. we're having fun with this stupid person. Right. So, right? well, then the next day, we get the other side of the story. Now, it, this also sounds like bullshit, but this headline's hilarious. This is from the Las Vegas Journal Review Journal. 
Caesar's Palace standoff suspect calls whole situation huge misunderstanding. Of course it is. <laughs> so, let's, so let's read this. Days after he was arrested after a standoff with police at Caesar's Palace, Matthew Mannix said he was not holding a woman hostage when he threw furniture out of a hotel room window and refused to come out for nearly six hours. Mannix, 36, was arrested Tuesday on charges of kidnapping, coercion with force, destroying property, resisting an officer, disregarding personal safety and being... By the way, I'm pretty sure you're guilty of that one. Uh, and being a fugitive from another what state. What does that even mean? I mean, you've disregarded your personal safety for most of your life, I feel like, with all the drugging and the, you know, the I mean, dangerous driving. I mean, isn't that just doing drugs? Texting while driving. I, I, I didn't even know that was so a thing. So you're saying I'm a bold Johnny... Ma Have you ever heard of disregarding personal... I've never heard of that I being a crime. I didn't know that was a crime. That's what I'm saying. Like, who's ever we heard of We don't need that? more crimes. I feel and like by, I did that on the way here. By the way, uh, new Sam, that's not who he is anymore. Okay. Boy, you still you still make flyers while you drive. Old Sam, his, his all of his hobbies were felonies. Okay, <laughs> so I had here's his quote: "I had no intention of hurting her, taking her hostage." He said Friday. She wanted to be with me the whole time. She helped me barricade the door. Manic said he found out last week that he was wanted on gun charges <laughs> and flew to Las Vegas to start a new life. He said he met the woman he has uh, he was with on the strip. And that they checked into Caesars on Monday. One of them's got money because Caesars ain't cheap. Uh, in an arrest report from the Metro Police Department, officers said Mannix threatened that he had ammo and would hurt authorities. The unidentified woman with him later told police that she feared he was going to of throw course. her out the window of after course. he smashed the glass and started throwing furniture down 21 floors. That was a, I said 20. That was a good guess. That was uh, a good guess. The damage was some of the most severe property damage that I have seen in my 18 years as a detective, an officer wrote with the report. Mannix said he lost. This is, the, this is where it gets interesting. Mannix said he lost $3,000 gambling on Sunday at a Las Vegas casino, and he feared people would hurt him or find his family and friends. Here's the quote. I knew there would be very mean people looking for me and wanting to hurt me, he said. That's why I created the insane situation at Caesar's Palace, knowing I would be safe once taken into custody. Okay, he is so <laughs> what is he? deep in neurosis, bro. Of drug neurosis, bro. Well, wait, hold on. You're right. Hold on. Next sentence. You're so smart, Sam. Manic said he has been receiving drugs to help him detox from ver a variety of substances he was using Tuesday. He uh, is addicted to marijuana. Okay. Now, I, well, we'll get into that, Johnny. Ketamine. Ooh. Meth. Ah, and fentanyl. Oh, that's like the that's How like the four horsemen of here? drugs, right, right there, dude. Yeah, the four horsemen of drugs apocalypse. Unbelievable. This got more interesting as we went How on. do you get addicted to fentanyl? Isn't so, that death? <laughs> very carefully, I would say. Unbelievable, dude. So so we got to start with, he's, so he intentionally, he claims he... Yeah, that's, what do you, that's what, tweaker logic, is bro. Is he thinking that, did he like go to a loan shark? Is that what this is, you think? like who? No, he's making stuff up. Yeah, in his head he owes like... Bro, like, uh, like when you're tweaking, dude, you're looking out the window, you're like, dude, what is that? You're like, while oh, you're I trying see. to so save your favorite are, spot you. in the porn. By the way, uh, meth sex sounds like it's full contact to me, right? It's just crazy. <laughs> so Full contact. Yeah, look at him. There he is. Oh, yeah. Look at that, dude. That guy's just like, dude, it worked. My plan worked. I got charged with 18 felonies, so I'm safe in prison. Had a rough the, night. Yeah. yeah. I mean, dude. Okay. <laughs> this is the most hilarious shit. All right. Now, what's your thoughts on Steve, uh, on Sam, what, Smith. Sam Smith? Garbage. Garbage. Can sing, right? At one point, he was yeah. like... And here's a quick sneak peek of Conspiracy Social Club. Enjoy. What I'm very nervous about is August, that this BRICS summit's going to happen, in which all these major players with a bunch of little countries are going to announce that they're going on their own international monetary system. They won't. They're on the dollar. Nobody's going anywhere. The dollar is still strong. It's still the currency. You're not going to be able to just change that way. There's just too much trade going on with the dollar, bud. Well, and it just is. <laughs> just so, is. Brian, all this the talk of bricks way, is just the dollar's stupid. Already digital. What? The dollar's already digital. <laughs> What's going to replace the dollar? Brian, the Brian, yuan? can we do have a moment on, real quick? On, the Brian. yuan. 
<laughs> Brian, Brian, can we have a no, no, moment wait, real wait, quick? You mean the story? Can I ask you something, Brian? <laughs> Brian, can I ask you something? <clears throat> sure. Are you playing a character right now? <laughs> no, I'm not. Is this called guy with head up his ass? No, 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 no. We go deep, homeboy. Eric, open your mind. Drink from the fountain of knowledge. There's lizard people everywhere. That's some interdimensional shit. Wake up, Aaron. This is only the beginning. Dude, you just blew my mind. Tim foil hat. Tim foil hat. Tim foil.